What's up, guys? Good morning to you. We're back at it with more Railroader, and uh, a little bit has happened since the last time we've played. We're following along with the uh, Dillsboro. This is basically the paper mill local the paper mill yard job. Uh, we did a little work up in Dillsboro, and uh, we're heading to the paper mill to pick up with that uh, that job. Um, so yeah, a few things have happened since the last time we've played. Let's go ahead and do a state of the railroad real fast while we're at it. Um, actually, you know what? I want to skip ahead just a little bit so we won't have to be hearing all that. Uh, we'll go up here towards Silver, maybe. Yeah, we'll go up, we'll go up here. We got, uh, the number one passenger train sitting here cooling her heels, waiting on the local to get by. So, yeah, a couple of things have happened since the last time we played. It's been two days in-game since the last video. Spur played it a lot this weekend. I actually neglected my air to air refueling practice in DCS, which I don't need to be doing, but I took one for the team for you guys. Uh, as far as the railroad overall, 108%, we've gone down a little bit. We were 110% for a long time. Passenger network, hundred percent freight performance, 99% operation safety, 94%. We had an incident. No one was injured, but we had an incident the last time, uh, <laughs> the last video. And it was so incredibly minor. Like, I can't believe that it bumped us all the way down to um, the 94%. But um, basically, we're kicking cars down at Silva. I kicked one a little bit hard. They coupled, and it just kind of went off the rails. Like, it, it was so minor. Like, I, I can't believe that bumped me down to 94%. Uh, That's kind of crazy. Nice. Let's check this, uh, let's check this roll by out real fast here. We can get it situated here. It's a number one and the number two. It just dawned on me. That's pretty cool. The number one and the number two. Nice. All right. So also, state of the railroad. Uh, we're at financially, we're at fifteen thousand seven hundred seventy-seven dollars. We're still doing good. We got fourteen thousand uh, dollars that we owe from a loan. Uh, I've kind of thought about maybe bumping that up a little bit and taking another loan. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but yeah, we got 1577. We're doing pretty good. We had a lot more than that uh, because we made a purchase. But uh, let's go down here to uh, the paper mill real fast. Uh, so the big thing that's happened since the last time we played was that I bumped the paper mill up to tier two. And I bumped Whittier um, Sawmill up to tier three. So this, everything else, I'm pretty certain is tier one across the entire railroad. Let's see. Silver paper board, tier two. Uh, she takes four pulp wood cars a day. She's got 95.4 tons of pulp wood in storage. Okay. Uh, Parsons tannery is tier one. It doesn't have, yeah, it has none in storage. It needs three a day. So that is why I haven't uh, I haven't bumped it up to tier three yet as far as paperboard because I feel like we need some more putwood cars. We got ten currently. I know the other day I kept saying we had eight. We've actually got ten. They're just floating around all over the railroad. Uh, two of the putwood cars go to Parsons, which isn't enough. We need some more for them, and then we've got uh, eight for um, uh, the paper mill paperboard. So I think that's pretty good because it takes four a day. That's eight so that's four in transit and four on spot so technically that should work out um and then Whittier Whittier sawmill we went to tier three uh he takes 15 cars a day so the other big thing that I did uh off uh off video was that I bought eight more uh skeleton log cars so we've got a total of 16 now now the thing with the other eight is that we are loading them out up at um on the walker branch so they're actually going up to bryson on the 510 and uh they're being loaded on the walker branch and then coming back on 511 then being switched out so yeah we're we're a little bit more involved with our blocking and stuff like that uh yeah a little bit more involved but not too terribly bad all right let's see what we got here as far as paper mill today uh we've got one Two to pick up. Of, of course, the coal is a given. Like, coal just... Man, they go through some coal. I really... I wish... When you had Robinson Coal, if you could get your own coal hoppers and provide coal here for a little bonus. And uh, I would have some in storage. Like, a place that takes this many cars this regularly... 
Uh, I would have some in storage. Absolutely. I'd have some sitting out here somewhere that you just pull from and put in, you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, we've got one, two, three, four cars to pick up here and we've got, okay, we already got the pulpwood cars out of there because we literally just switched this uh, yesterday and now we've got more to do. So yeah. All right. Uh, these are our um, inbound cars. These came directly from the interchange. Instead of taking these on the 510 all the way up to Dillsboro, I just set them out here in the siding so we could uh, switch. So we've got three going to a uh, pulp. We've got uh, these two going on this track right here to, uh, to coal. And then that one's going on that spot over there. Okay, so what I think we'll do is we'll just back into siding grab them back out then pull around and then switch this out and then we'll go hit up the other side really fast too so shouldn't be too bad of a job today not too bad all right hang on a second i got cord here getting in my way from my microphone there you go all right spurs in disarray this morning okay uh let's grab this guy we'll do uh we'll do manual really I, you know before we do that we need to get the um we need to get the passenger job on his way too I think he's pretty much good to go. We just need to run around and um, go back the other direction. Because it is a, I, I mean, it is, it's a headache, right? Like the passenger jobs are absolute headache. You know, you don't have to babysit them nearly as much as you used to. The fact that they're AI and they make their own stops, you don't have to put the fusees out every time. That's like, that's a game changer. But passenger, like, honestly, it still is kind of, uh, it's kind of a headache. And I know you guys have been mentioning in the comments about AI and stuff, and supposedly they're working on an advanced waypoint system. Uh, I'm going to have to go check that out and see what it looks like. But um, that would be really nice. That would be super nice if there was some kind of an advanced waypoint system that um, thing's super loud. Man, it's about to blow my eardrums out. Um, that would be nice. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. You know, it's not it's not easy running a railroad, period. I mean, you're talking about a system that requires a ton of people to make this happen, especially back in the day. You're talking about five-man crews across the board. Everywhere. You know, five-man crews standard, and we're just one person trying to run an entire railroad. So I think the advanced waypoint system will help um, moving trains while you're kind of focusing on other things. But... Uh, Man, I don't know. It's just, it's going to be a lot. And I know you guys left in the comments as well, too. They're like, you know, it's going to get to the point where it's almost impossible to do by yourself. And I could imagine that. That's why I'm kind of being really timid as far as like how I bump things up uh, tier wise. I, I want to bump like the big industries, the big powerhouses, the big money makers on the railroad. I want to bump them up the higher tiers. And probably just leave the little mom and pop places as uh, lower tiers, like tier one or something. You know, something to that effect. Maybe even dump some of them off. You know, I have considered that. I have considered that some of the really small places. I really, I, I wish I had a good source of traffic up in Bryson. Now, sending the log cars, the eight log cars up there to... Um, Walker has definitely fill, filled out the tonnage on the 510 and the 511 north of um, Whittier, which was kind of the problem we were having. Like, we had a lot of tonnage moving from Whittier south in between, but it was a little bit on the light side north of Whittier. And um, honestly, that was one of the main reasons that I got the log cars and sent them north because I wanted to kind of a way to kind of fill that tonnage out a little bit. All right, we got 15, zero. Okay, yeah, zero. We're good on that. Let's take this guy. We'll send him on his way. Reverse warp speed. Mr. Sulu warp speed. If you didn't know, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I love Star Trek. The old series and the next generation. I don't care about the other stuff, but... Mrs. Spur and I are, we're absolutely big Star Trek fans. Also, Star Wars, too. I love both of them. I, th I think it's kind of ridiculous, like, this whole debate between Star Wars and Star Trek. They're both, it's like apples and oranges. They're completely different shows. Enjoy both of them. I do. All right, so, uh, number one is going north. 
go up here to Dillsboro, make sure all the switches are. You know what? We'll run this guy on the siding. There you go. Yeah, we hit up Dillsboro on the way south just a little bit ago. All right, that's good. Get that line. I knew I had to come up here. That's the one thing is like keeping up with switches in this game. Man, it just. Keeping up with the switches is the hardest part. All right, everything else should be good. Let's see what the number one looks like fuel wise. He should be able to make it to Whittier. I try to do the intermediate point for him at Whittier. Actually, we need to go back to him. There we go. Let's follow him. Let's see what he looks like here. He should be fine. Yeah, 2.328. Yeah, I really... This is a 10-wheeler. I would really like to downgrade this thing and get something to replace it. And that's part of the dilemma I'm at right now, guys. He's 95% too. He needs some shop work, but he stays so busy, it's hard to do that. It's hard to put him in the shop. So... Um... We could do a Pacific for 18 grand. $2,000 discount. Not terribly bad, right? Like that's doable. That's a little more than what we, I, help. I could sell the caboose and we could do that. Like I, I don't want to bankrupt this though. Like I don't want to put it at zero cash, but uh, we could do the Atlantic for 10,350. Or we could do the Pacific. I feel like if we do the Atlantic, I don't know. I was going to say we might have to upgrade pretty soon. But really, all I want definitely is two more, uh, an observation car on each end so we won't have to turn it. And then maybe one more coach. I, I'm not even sure about one more coach right now. So you're looking at, 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 at a max. Two observation, three, so six cars. That's not like... That's not bad. I wonder, like, what is the, um, what is attractive effort on his 10 wheeler? Uh, 21, 9. 21, 6, 21, 9. I don't know which one we have. Which one is this? This is a 44 ton. 060, 46, it's a 460. The American is 22, 6. Really not much of an upgrade, honestly. Like, it's not... I, I mean, capacity-wise, yeah, that would be really nice. 10 tons of coal and 6,000 gallons of water. Yeah, this we'd be able to run this thing and not have to do the intermediate anymore. Um, Oh, that's the American. Never mind. We don't need the... We're looking at the Atlantic. The Atlantic is... Uh, 25.7. So it's just a little bit better than the... Um, than the 10-wheeler. Ten thousand dollars, ten three, eighteen. I feel like Pacific is in-game passenger. If we just saved up and got the Pacific, then we wouldn't have to worry about it no more. I think that would just be it, right? Like that's my that's kind of my thinking. Get the Pacific and just be done with it and not worry about it anymore. It would never be another concern. I don't think us run. I don't see us running trains that are any bigger than that. But the big thing right now is I feel like we definitely need uh, a few more pulpwood cars. I do. I, I think that's probably one of the most pressing things we have right now is to get at least. Let's see. It takes three a day for Parsons. Four a day for... Um, the paper mill we've got eight for the paper mill so we're double what we actually need so we could have like i said four on spot four in transit so i i really feel like we probably need four more for um the tannery to keep it going because the tannery is really kind of uh is kind of struggling a little bit because we uh we can't keep cars there we've got uh we've got two down here We've got two for the tannery and two for the paper mill. So we've got a few. But yeah, I think we need to expand our tannery cars. We, At a minimum, we need one more tannery car 
if not uh if not four more four total is six so it'd be three on spot and three in transit so yeah i i kind of think i kind of think that uh passenger train Man, I'm really leery just about sinking a bunch of money in the passenger train. You know, you're talking about the two observation cars is what? $14,000 total. And then a new locomotive is 18. So, yeah, you're you're looking at a good bit of money. 1820 what? $32,000 give or take somewhere in there for that's just like rough math. Doing rough maths in my head. Uh yeah, somewhere in there give or take 18, yeah. 18 and 14 let's see yeah it's like 32 somewhere in there um i'm just i'm leery about putting that much money into the passenger trains 32 grand would be really nice to spend on a good mainline locomotive i mean really it would but um you know the passenger train is a regular source of income like i can't i can't deny that i can't deny that it's a good source of income for us a good regular source what are we looking at 670 tons total on this bad boy let's see these cars these two are going in we're pulling one out and then we got one going in and pulling one out okay yeah, it's really hard to deny that the passenger trains are a good regular source of income. You know, we're looking at... Let's go look at our financials, actually. You know what? Let's close this out. Yeah, you had 291 at Silva Depot. For passenger. 56 not that great you know if we could get two to three hundred dollars a pop at every stop that would be really good money like i wouldn't i wouldn't hesitate putting the money back into the passenger train but i, I don't know that I, I mean if we weren't going to get the passenger stuff i would probably get an 060 for um for dillsboro Man, she's a little heavy with all that. Get the 060 for Dillsboro. Um, we could. I would like to get a better mainline engine. I'm looking at a consolidation for uh, the 510 and the 511, and then we could downgrade the Mikado up to uh, the Walker branch. That'd be good. And I know, I know, that's been mentioned in the comments a few times. To uh, oh man, she is struggling right here. All right, come on, you can do it. Yeah, she is. This is a pretty good grade right here. Yeah, 1.1%. I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, this is a decent grade right here. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Move on up there. Yeah, we need those. There's just so much stuff we need. I'm just I'm, like right now, I'm kind of struggling prioritizing what I need to do next. I'm really kind of think on it. Passenger stuff, 060 for, for Dillsboro. I think we're okay on the main mainline engine. Like the Mikado is doing its job. I don't think it's that pressing. Um, the 060 is doing good, taking the pulpwood and log cars up the Walker Branch at Bryson, so that's fine. It's not pressing on that. It's just, um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what we need to do exactly. I definitely know we're not upgrading any more tiers on any of these industries right now. Yeah, we're definitely we're not going to do that. I think I think we're pretty well set. All right, these are all interchange cars. And yeah, there's a little grade right here. That pulp wood doesn't help. That fills out the tonnage a lot on the bottom right there. Let's go ahead. Let's stop this guy. Right we got one car going in. It's one of these. It's no, nah, it's actually it's these two right here. All right, let's go ahead and pull it down. So we got to cut right there. We'll cut the pulp wood off. Yeah, I hate it. I stopped him now. Like he was struggling so hard to get moving. 
669 tons you should totally do that 750 is the most that we've had but i think yeah yeah we've absolutely done 750 we did like 746 I just, I want to be at a really, really good position before we uh, expand up to Alarca. That's going to be our next expansion. And I don't want to struggle with that like I did when I got Silva. Man, I was struggling like no tomorrow on that. Let's cut you off. Take him ahead. I was really struggling with that. I wasn't prepared for that locomotive wise. Like I had to grind like no tomorrow to get the power that we needed to um, to kind of make the railroad work down there. It was really tough. Yeah, it was real tough. Let's get ready right here. I'm going to shove back in there. We'll grab these. Are they all solid? Yeah, they are solid. We got any handbrakes on them? Uh, no, we don't. Okay. Yeah, that one does. All right, let's release that one. That one's released. Okay, we're good. Yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll jump in here. We'll grab these. We'll set the empty out. We'll spot the two up. Slow them up just a little bit here. And I've been, I... Kind of thought about diesel. I, I really, I see the appeal of it. I want to stay away from diesel. I just want to enjoy the steam. But man, the, the diesel's like really calling. It would make it uh, very easy on the, uh, the northern end of the line as we expand. Because you just keep adding diesels to the consist until you get the horsepower you need. Like I absolutely see the appeal of that with the railroads where you can kind of make your consist however you want. I remember growing up watching CSX, very early CSX. I'm talking like just after the da after the dash eights were uh, delivered. They were brand new. Uh, at least on the line that I lived on, on the line will sub, it was really common to see like they love sending two dash eights out together. Well, mainline traits that back in the day used to take like four, five, six, four axle locomotives. They put two dash eights on it, and then they would add a GP, like a GP38 dash two, or a, a U23B or something like that. And so they would make it basically an, an even 10,000 horsepower is what they were doing. But my point is, is that they were kind of they were able to customize and get pretty much exactly the amount of horsepower that they needed to get the train over the road. And I get that. Not nearly as, uh, it's not nearly as flexible as with the steam. I don't think we're going to kick this guy. I think we're just going to shove him down there. Paper mill. I feel like we live at the paper mill. I really do. We work this job all the time. All the time. That air hose there. Go ahead and get that before we forget about it. Uh, let's make a cut right here. All right, we should be able to just kick these two over and then we'll be good to go. Come on, take them ahead. Take them ahead. That's a lot to hang on to to switch with this little steam engine. We need something a little beefier. He goes in there too. So three go in three go in there. Okay. Three go back. Alright. There we go. Thank God we can kick in game. Like it makes it so easy. It it really does save you time to uh to be able to kick to a spot. It really just does. Because then you don't have to pull your locomotive all, like, all the way down in there and then come all the way back out and all that stuff. Like It, just, it saves a lot of time. And that's why they did all those fancy switching moves back in the day. 
picking to a spot, dropping to a spot, snatching them by, jerking them by, whatever you want to call it. Jerk them to a spot. There we go. Nice. All right. We'll let these guys roll up in there. This guy is good. Does he have a handbrake? No, he doesn't. All right, these are on the spot. We'll go ahead and tie them down. This guy going back forward. Nice. All right. There we go. So we've got one more car. Oh, he does have a handbrake. Where is that at? Where's this handbrake at? It's on the wood racks. There we go. So we got one more to pull. Where's he go? Right there. Uh, yeah, okay, that, yeah, that's kind of a headache. Kind of a headache because you've got a different spot on top of the other spot, so. Really, man, I wish, really wish the, uh, the interchange cars were a different color than the paper mill, like, than, like, silver proper, right? I, 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 it would be so much easier. I, I would love to see customizable colors. Like, you could have the default colors if you want. But uh, you could customize them as well. All right, I think I should be good right here. Yeah, I would love to customize these things. I think it would help out a lot. All right, let's take them to the switch. I think something else would be cool in game. I I don't know, like if you could apply that to this route, but um, livestock. I think livestock would be really cool. Livestock car, like stock cars. I don't know uh, how much livestock was a thing up here back in the day. I know where I live in Texas now, they, they, they don't like they've been going forever, but they used to have some huge stock pins out here. They had one here in town where they, uh, they have the rodeos there now, but, um, used to have a big stockyard pin there. All right, so we need to shove up in here. That switch is good. This guy's gonna have a handbrake. No, he doesn't actually. He doesn't have a handbrake. God, it looks like none of these have handbrakes. Okay, nice. We'll just go right. Oh, they're squealing through the curves. I like that effect. That sounds really good. The sharp curves, absolutely. Like that is 100% legit. Let's ease up there. We'll just grab this guy, keep shoving. And grab the other two. We'll have to kind of ease up there because they're against the bumper. Slow down just a tad. Oh, one point. Yeah, that's not. There we go. Yeah, he didn't like that because they're bumped. Yeah. Right up against the bumper. Nice. I've had experience with that in real life. I've probably told this story before. Some of you may have heard it, some of you may not have. But when I was cubbing in real life on the railroad, I was working, I was cubbing on a local. And uh, we didn't have many bumpers on the entire like routes that I worked. And I covered like 470 miles of track is what we had. And there may have been one or two bumpers on the whole route. Like usually it was just a pile of dirt or some cross ties or something. But we had a legit bumper at this big uh, feed mill. And um, it wasn't against the bumper, but it was really super close to it. Like just a little bit away from it. And um, the conductor is like, I'm going to let you make this coupling. He's like, you just got to ease them up here real easy and just kind of bump against it and grab it. And uh, it's the only time I ever had a dealing with the FRA, believe it or not. We knew the FRA was out watching us. It was a man and a woman. They are in a little black car. had a couple antennas on top. And they told me when we got started, when we were working that day, they are like, that's the FRA in that car. I was like, okay. So he tells me uh, about making that coupling. And we'd had a discussion about it over the radio. There was something that we had said that tipped the FRA off 
on that. And they literally, they came over there and approached us and there's like, you gonna let him make that coupling. And the conductor was like, well, he's got to learn somewhere. He's like, I'd rather him learn it supervised than not, you know, just do it on his own with no experience. So the whole thing was just kind of weird. Like, I, I don't know. Like really they had no reason to get involved in that period, honestly, like in my mind. But uh, I made the coupling. It went fine. It wasn't a big deal. Like, I don't know. The whole situation was just kind of odd. All right, let's see. We got... Where do we need? We've got air bottles somewhere. Either air hoses or... Yeah, those are open. These. All right. Grab you. And grab you. Nice. All right, now we're solid. Okay. Uh, we gotta shove this guy back just a little bit. And then we'll spot this guy up. And then we gotta put everything back the way it was, basically. There we go. Take him ahead. Put a handbrake on you. Man, she seems so draggy today. What's our tonnage on this? 521? That's pretty decent. Yeah, that's pretty decent amount. We're just not like yanking these cars all over the place. That's pretty decent tonnage. There, there you go. Let's shove this guy back to his spot. But yeah, FRA. They used to come, uh, supposedly they'd come up and watch the paper mill job, the actual real life paper mill job that I worked. They would come up there I never saw him, but I remember the train master calling and telling us that the FRA was probably going to be up there to, you know, be on your toes, right? And be on your toes, do what you're supposed to do. Um, but I never saw him up there. I, I know we had a guy got in trouble for getting on and off moving equipment. This is before, like, you could do it. You could do getting on and off moving equipment for years and years and years and years. That was the thing. That was the only way to do it. And then all of a sudden one day, and I don't know when it happened, but it happened before I hired out. They said, no, oh, you can't get on and off moving equipment anymore. It's bad. You got to come to a full stop. Well, that just like tripled the amount of time it took you to do anything on the railroad. So, um, they told us we couldn't, you know, you can't, when I hired, you couldn't get on and off moving equipment. Everything had to be a full stop. But it was one of those kind of deals where you, you could, you can kind of do it and get away with it, you know, depending on who caught you. Uh, that was one of the first things I learned when I hired out. I was like, oh, well, you throw that out the window because, like, <laughs> it just, it wasn't possible. If you had a lot of switching to do, that just, that wasn't a thing. All right, this guy, okay, so we're just spotting the one back, and then the, we got to put the tank car back where he belongs, and then... And he, uh, he's kind of on the spot. We're going to take him ahead just a little bit. So, yeah, you could kind of get away from it. But I remember we had some guys at the FRA got them for that, like, getting on and off moving equipment. I never understood that either because I thought that was more of like a company policy than a, a, a federal thing. But All right, we got that cut. Wait, we're good. Put a handbrake on that guy right there, just in case. They shouldn't roll anywhere right here. All right, nice. So, um, we'll grab these together. Uh, we'll have to kick our coal hoppers down, uh, down this track. Yeah, it's kind of worked well. No, not really. It didn't work out that great, but it'll be okay. We'll make it right here in just a second. It's just we got like we've got interchange cars, and then we got the coal hoppers, and we got interchange cars. So they're kind of they're kind of mixed together, and then we got the wood racks on the bottom that we got to spot up. All right, let's get these guys up here. Get them together. Um, probably what we'll do is we'll kind of sort them out. Like, we'll go do the pulpwood cars. 
and we'll kind of sort our interchange together because we're just going to leave them on the lead on the paper mill lead here and just let the instead of taking them back to Dillsboro, there's no point we'll just kind of leave them there who's got the handbrake is it this guy yeah we'll just kind of leave them there you can get them later uh yeah we could set our uh, our wood racks and interchange cars over we could kick our um pull down the uh down this lead and then set the other interchange cars over and then we should be set i don't know if i want to go ahead and work the footwood yard first or get the coal we could we've done it before it just dawned on me we could just um could kick the pulp wood to a spot see these go to silver paperboard so they go on this one right here that guy's lined that guy's lined we could you know what? we'll kick them down there to a spot that's kind of a that's kind of a long kick but it works in game it'll save us a lot of time not having to go down there we don't need to pull anything yeah she's still she's got a lot of tonnage on her these two coal hoppers in the pulp wood are large. <laughs> They're probably like at least half that tonnage. They're half the tonnage for sure. If you guys, if you have a favorite job to work in game, what's your favorite job to work? Like, do you have, do you have a place that you like switching? Is it paper mill? Do you like working the main line? I like the road crates. I like setting out and picking up. I think that's pretty cool. Here lately i've been letting the road freights take care of a lot of the the intermediate industries like uh ayla of course we kind of been doing that anyway i take the the ayla inbound cars with me up to bryson then we'll turn the train and come back on the five uh the 511 and then they'll switch southbound they'll get the ayla cars uh same with wilma wilma too we do the same thing there now like i don't even send the local down there anymore i just let the road freight get it kind of on the way Oh yeah, she yeah, she's a little bit weighty. She's a little bit weighty right here, that is for sure. What is she doing? Nine point nine? And yeah, she may she may stall out right here, guys. Come on, just a little bit further. Come on. I, I just need three cars. One more car, one. That'll do right there. Get our switch. Start shoving back. We'll cut these bad boys off and send them on their way. We'll do two and then uh and then we'll do two. We'll do the first two. We'll give ourselves a good gap so we'll have time to throw the switch. And then we'll do uh we'll do two more. We got it. We just we gotta kick them really good here. Silver paperboard. There we go. All right, if we can grab it. There we go. <laughs> They're gonna be moving. Yeah, they are. They're gonna be moving big time. All right, let's get stopped. Let's get a little little break here. Let's see. Let's double check and make sure we don't want to have an accident and ruin our safety record even more. There we go. Okay, so all we got to do. Is wait a minute. Silver paperboard, silver paperboard. I could have swore we had a tannery car. I am completely wrong on that. This one's going there too. I I could have swore like I don't know what I was thinking, but I totally had it in my mind that we had four cars. Two were going here and two were going and they're all going to the same place. So I just did that for nothing, but Y'all probably watching going spur. What are you talking about? They're all silver. They're all paperboard cars. You know what? We'll kick this one down there too. It's fine. We can totally do that. Got to get them up to about 10. There we go. Not quite as far to go in this round, so that'll be good. Yeah, I could have swore. Like... I know we've got some tannery cars somewhere. Where are they? Are that, was that the empties that we just took back, maybe? I just, I feel like we had some tannery cars somewhere. Guy on his way was shoot. We could have kicked all of them in one go and just, like, been done. 
They're not too bad. They slow down a good bit. Just don't stop short. Like that would suck like no tomorrow. Like they're really start. Is there a grade right here? Like what is this? No? No, it's good. It looks like it's fairly flat. Yeah, it's fairly flat. There we go. We got him on the spot now. Be a little bit of money for us. Get down here towards the end. This would be where this is really a time saver is in multiplayer where your brakeman can kind of babysit the cars while you make your other moves. Like we could be doing other stuff right now if we didn't have to kind of babysit these things. All right, what do we got? Yeah, let's set these guys over. So we're just going to kick them over as well. Come on, give me a kick. That guy go. All right, that'll do right there. Those guys go on their way. We just want to kick them over on this lead right here. Just give him a little love tap. Yeah, I totally thought I had that figured out. I was like, oh yeah, we'll do the two paperboard, the two tannery cars, and then we'll be done. We really need some more tannery potwood cars. Like that's definitely, our, I think, our next purchase. Because if these industries aren't functioning, then we're like, we're not making any money. It doesn't matter. You know, I don't want to babysit that guy anymore. Let's just stop him short. That's good right there. Get our switch back. Now, we need to kick our coal hoppers like no tomorrow. No tomorrow. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We need at least 10. At least 10 on that. There we go. Nice. 11. That should be good. All right. We'll send them on their way. All right. Now we got to go back, grab on these other guys, Let's get that handbrake back off. Shove these guys in the clear. And then we'll be set. We'll be done. We'll take no time. Kicking is such a lifesaver, man. It really just is. You guys, if you didn't know, if you couldn't tell, Spurs is a huge fan of kicking cars in game. Like <laughs> it really is. Alright, we gotta keep uh we gotta keep an eye on these guys. Why is there Oh, we still we got independent on. Okay, there we go. Come on, go. We gotta go. I want to cut those guys loose before we uh got by that switch. It'll be alright. There we go. You back. Go break. Watch the other cars there. Get a handbrake on this guy. There we go. Back to this guy. Alright, we should should be good the whole way man i haven't spotted cars up there in forever i guess because it's still tier one like they don't hardly when it's tier one they hardly do anything all right there we go i wish i don't think we can fit two between here and the clearance point on that switch it'd be nice if we could then all i gotta do is come up here a couple up and show them in and like set those over and then we'd be good to go but Just a little further. Do a little handbrake on them here. A little handbrake action. Uh, yeah, right about here is going to be good. That right, good enough. I don't open them up wide open in the paper mill. Like the real one that I worked in real life, we had speed limits there too. So yeah, I try to keep it at least a little bit legit. You know, just can't go ripping around all over the place here.
It'd be nice to keep an engine up here on this lead. Like, if I were to get a diesel, and this is something that I may very well do. I may get the switcher. And just keep it, like, right here. You know? And all he would do is basically just switch. Oh, man, you're going to stop on the points like that. Really? You couldn't roll, like, an extra half foot? And just keep it up here, and then I can just kick the cars down here too. We can spot them up super fast, and then like we wouldn't have to make this extra move running around and all that mess. That would be nice. I I could I could definitely see doing a switcher like that for real, for real. So I think we could do that. All right, let's reverse. I could totally see that. Let's see if these guys fit. Yeah, no, they're not going to fit. Yeah, that, that don't fit at all. That's not even remotely close to fitting. It's all about it's all about saving those moves. Because each move is time, right? Time is money. We gotta get this switched out as fast as we can. I wonder what's going on with the rest of our uh the rest of our railroad. Oof, we got a traffic jam up here, guys. I neglected... <laughs> I neglected the 800 up there. The, I don't even know what train that is, honestly. Like, is that the 510 or the 511? I can't remember what I was doing yesterday when... We, uh... We did this. I, I don't... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Who is that up there? What train is that up there? I really, I don't know, but we've got a big old cluster up there in uh, Whittier now. The number three is on the law mill, uh, on the sawmill, on the law mill, on the sawmill spill. I cannot talk. We're going to start that over. It is on the sawmill spur with uh, logs. So I know what he's doing. I thought 800 had left. I thought I'd sent him on his way. I don't remember though. Be honest, I really don't. All right, let's kick these bad boys. Oh, I don't know why I did that. I shouldn't have done. It. It's just going to couple back up. Yep. Either way, we need to kick them like no tomorrow. All right, that'll do right there. Numero uno. Actually, numero dos. There we go. All right, throw you back. Let's do another kick. Right here. Kick these two to spot. Sweet. They moving too. That's <laughs> that's spicy. That is spicy on the spot right there. Yeah, that would definitely be a no-no. Pop him there. All right, these guys are good. Let's go ahead and slow them up. All right, let's get this guy. All right, come on, numero dos. Pay a little money there. A little money coming in. Let number dos come down here, grab these cars, grab those, and we'll leave them on the, um, we'll leave them on the paper mill lead for the 511 to pick up. Take to the interchange and then we're set. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've I've seen people in in like the Reddit post talking about you know like making multiple runs to the uh, interchange. Only do two runs to the interchange. Everything else waits. You know, go down there, pick up your inbounds, take those, and then go back and take your uh you know you take your outbounds. Man, I'm curious what is going on. We got all kind of stuff up here. We really just do. There's a 601, the 1, the 800, the 3. I Okay, I know what's going on. The, the 800. Okay, I'll show you guys in a second when we get up there, then we'll call it. When we get up there, we'll call it. Did these guys stop? Like, did they? Yeah, just about. We kicked them a little bit harder. Okay, I know, yeah, I know what's going on up there now. I know what I was planning on doing. Reverse. 
It'd be nice if these guys would just like had a little bit more oomph behind them so we wouldn't have to go down there and grab them. That's what I was trying to like save myself from doing. I mean, ideally, I'd love to be able to just stop the engine right there and just wait on them to come to me and then go on about your business. But see, this is a waste to move right here. Spur is extra, extra picky. about these wasted moves come on man they're just creeping you know what we'll just go down here and get it they're probably not even doing a mile an hour like they're about to stop there we go all right we finally got them all right take them ahead not too bad of an outbound going to the interchange. So this is Dillsboro and paper mill cars, but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars. Not bad. I like the interchange cuts. Those bring in a nice chunk of money. If you've got a good sized train going in there, it's because it's like the deliveries, you just kind of like, you're making a little money here and there, but not a lot. this guy stopped here let's go back and grab those other ones oh we still got the brake applied all right spur come on there we go your handbrake release you So I guess we'll run back light. There's really, there's no point in taking these guys back up there, taking them to Dillsboro just to turn around and take them back down here. It's just a waste of fuel. I'll just leave them here. All right, let's pull them ahead. Take them ahead. Let's get, yeah, let's get everything laced together. If we can, may not be able to. There we go, got that one. That one's good. Blow them down a little bit. That's good. Looks like all we got is just one more. Is probably going to be this one here. No. There it is. Right there. Nice. All right. Now everything's laced together. We're good on that. All right. Take them ahead. Take them to the switch. We'll cut them all. Brakeman standing down there waiting. Not bad. That wasn't too bad at all. It's really just not. It'd be nice if we had a uh, another engine sitting up there on the other end. We'd have to run up. Wouldn't have to run like all the way down there to make those spots. And I think a diesel. I don't know how much that little switcher holds as far as fuel, but uh, I feel like it. Like if that's all you do with it, it seems like it would probably be forever before you would have to give it like gas. Oh, yeah, put a handbrake on that bad boy. Let's get one on this one too, just in case. Nice. All right, we'll AI this guy. We'll send him back on his way. Operations. Not for that. There you go. Road, reverse, wide open, warp speed. Sweet. I think we got everything. All right, there's our paper mill cut ready to go for the 511. Make his pick up. Let's go uh, double check this guy up here at Dillsboro. Make sure everything's okay because we're going to need to uh, get some coal and water in Dillsboro. Uh, is he lined in is the question. Is he lined the right way? want to make sure. I don't want to misroute anyone. I've done it, and it sucks to, uh, to misroute someone. So we'll grab you, that, and we'll put a flare right here, and then we'll spot him up. Our coal look like. We'll have to see about this at some point. We're um, 3.7. Yeah, it's getting kind of low. Definitely, it's getting kind of low. Let's go check out uh, Wilmot real quick. See, or not Wilmot, Whittier. Okay, yeah, this isn't a big deal. This is okay. I see exactly what I was doing. So these are our um, Walker log cars. So what happens is the five ten brings them south. He sets them out with the Whittier cut, 
And then the Whittier Yard Job spots him up and does his thing with him. And then what he does, he pulls the empties and spots him up here. And I was going to have the uh, 510 pull high. And then put all those empty log cars on the about on the bottom. I don't know how like having a big string of empties on the head end would work out in game. In real life, that would be a bad deal. Like you could you could have a string line derailment or something like that. For sure. Maybe you can in game. I don't want to test it out, that's for sure. Alright, eight hundred. What's he doing? A little low. Yeah, I don't know. We better top him off with some water, honestly. Yeah. Well, oh, cool your jets, dude. We're not done. We're not <laughs> we're not done. We're gonna get some water. He's a little bit yeah, he's a little bit low. He may make it to um I was thinking originally that I could make it from Bryson to Silva and back on one tender. But as the tonnage is going up, that like the possibility of that happening is going down, so I don't think that's going to be a thing okay yeah we're good we'll have them uh we'll have them just clear this switch 601's on the bottom of the log so we'll just shove them to a coupling and then he can go on about his way i don't he shouldn't need any more coal i'm not gonna give him coal probably not even gonna give him any more water i think that's good right there we just need to get him by like <laughs> just drench our engine no, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He should make it on that. All right, let's do um, let's do road reverse warp speed. Does he? Oh, he he's got cars to set out. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're still not. We haven't done any of that yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, now we've got a problem. Okay. So we got to set these guys out. Yeah, we got to set them out. This one's staying here too. Yeah, so everything gets set out except for these two Brysons. Pass Dude, like you need to stop. Passenger train, stop. Oh, what a mess. It's turned into a mess. <laughs> it's turned into a mess. Just stop. Please stop. Just... Why you gotta be so extra? Go back. Go back. Ugh, I don't... Dude, I was kind of hoping to set the Whittier cars in here, but are they gonna fit? Like, how many do we have? See, I, I was thinking that we had already done that, and then when I kind of looked at it, I was like, wait a minute. That is not what we've done. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars. That's not going to go in there. Uh. Yeah, we're kind of um. We're kind of in a mess right now. Those aren't going to fit. Yeah, those are not going to fit. All right, let's do this. Uh, it's a little bit of an extra move. Let's just take this guy. Let's clear the crossover. Come on, take him ahead. Or I mean, take him reverse. Clear the crossover. And we'll, uh, we gotta get coal and water for this bad boy. I don't know. He probably, he could, he could make it to Bryson. You know what? Let's go ahead and get him on out of here. So what we're going to do, swing this guy high, back the other one through the crossover, the passenger job, get him on his way. And then we should be set. We just got to pull up enough to clear the crossover for um, engine tender and three passenger cars. We should have the room to do it. up here on this switch all the way and then we'll sort this guy out when we're done all right he's got one more log this guy slowed up a little bit here just a little further come on just a little more yeah we need we need more we could line ourselves down that way to give ourselves a little more room too if we needed to let me just do that 
Oh, uh, no, we can't. Pull him up a little bit further. Yeah, kind of a mess. I wasn't thinking about that at all. I had honestly, like, I thought yesterday I'd sent this guy on his way, but I think I kind of stopped abruptly. Usually I don't like stopping in the middle of stuff like this. Like, I like to try to get it sorted. Because it leads to a ton of confusion when you come back. As you can see. All right, let's select this guy. Reverse. All right, you can go. Get you out of here, Pronto Al Dente. If we need a little more headroom, we can go down the log, the log spur. That'll be all right. Yeah, Whittier's pretty congested. Whittier can be. There can be a lot going on in Whittier. Yeah, come on, 30, don't, don't get crazy with it. Like, 30 is a bit much. All right, we just need to clear this switch. He's, yeah, he was close to clearing. Yeah, he was close to clearing. He, he would have done it. Yeah, we wouldn't have had to go down that lead, but just to be careful. All right, let's come on back. All the passengers are like, what in the blue hell is going on? <laughs> what are we doing? Getting jostled around all over the place, back and forth. Got to grab our coal hopper there. Pin him down to silver. And get that switch. This one. All right, there we go. Now we should be good. I don't think he's fouling the clearance up here. No, he's not. All right, before we forget, actually, no, let's not do that. Let's go up here and look at Bryson real quick. Make sure everything's kind of sorted a little bit as far as where he's going. Uh, I need to go back. Come on. We'll just follow the 600. There we go. There we go. All right. There's our tannery cars that I was thinking about. Yeah. Okay. Two silver, two tannery. It's on a different train. Never mind. It all kind of blends together after a while. Let's get that switch. This one here. That's right. I ran up there with the Bryson yard job and we grabbed that real fast. All right, here just in case. All right, now we're set. Yeah, that's 511's cut back south. Okay, let's go back to the 600. Go. All you. I should say the 800. All right, 800. Where are you? Oh, we got the wrong one. I got the number one. I thought I made the number one AI. Did I not? No. There you go. Number one's. Oh, we just made. It's falling apart, guys. We're having problems here. <laughs> We're having issues. Grab this one. Okay, this is not the tender. That is what we need. Orders, road, wide open. Okay. Confusion is solved. All right, we got this guy. He is manual still. All right, let's. Take him forward. That's where it gets really like kind of confusing sometimes is trying to select this stuff because sometimes I know it's like I swore I clicked on it, but it didn't. It didn't do anything. All right. Uh, I got to think how we're going to do this. This guy's. Fouling the clearance just a little bit. So let's do road. We reverse it. 15, let's line him up that way. Yeah, I really, I don't want to do that. I was thinking about just letting the Whittier cars kind of hang out into this other track right here, but I really just, I don't want to do that. 
I don't want to do that. You know what? Let's do let's do this instead. Let's just stop them right here. All right, let's shove these out. We'll get them on the bottom. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to figure out like how I want to do this. If I can make it kind of easy on myself. First to 601. All right. Yeah, let's. Just trying to figure out how I want to do those Whittier cars. I, I really, I wish they would fit and we could just do a simple run around. I hate going all the way to the south. I don't know why it's not that far, but it just really just aggravates me like no dang tomorrow. They have to go all the way down here to run around. I, I really like using this one right here if they'll fit, but that's not going to clear nine cars. I don't think so. And it really, it just, it aggravates the crap out of me to have to go all the way to the south end. I, I know it's not a big deal. It's really like I make it way bigger of a deal than it should actually be. But right, there we go. We got him. Um, that's good. Let's take. Okay. I know now this is going to work out perfect anyway, actually. Oh, quit coupling. Pop. Go quick, <laughs> quickly, quickly. Okay. We're going to take this guy down here and just wait. We'll set the Bryson cars over and then we'll set the Whittier cars on top of him. Then he's on the bottom. He's ready to spot him up. All right, there we go. Sir, Bryson cut over right there. Get a handbrake on him so he won't roll away. Then we'll just set the um, Whittiers on top of our switcher. That'll clear. Absolutely. And then we're going to be set, guys. Yeah, I, I'm really, I, I must have been like really rushed when I did this yesterday. I can't remember what was going on, but I know I stopped abruptly. For some reason, I didn't turn this guy at, uh, at Dillsboro like I always do. Okay, let's see what we got. 378, 11 cars. Double check, make sure everything's Whittier sawmill, yep. Almost there, three more cars, yeah, we'll fit. It may fit in between the switches, I may have did all that for nothing. Let's get this guy right here. Yeah, I could have made that fit if I had spotted it a little easier, but either way, we're good with that. There we go, get you. That switch back. I need to find that map. I had that map that shows like it has all the distances and car counts and stuff. Now we're set. Now we're set. Nothing. You see, like, if I didn't have these cars going to Walker for the sawmill, the Bryson cut, the, uh, the tonnage is so light between Whittier and Bryson. Like, there's just not much. But this helps fill it out a whole lot. So that's good at least. Let's get, um, let's get the handbrake. Where's that handbrake at? Right here. There we go. Thank you. Make you road, reverse, warp speed. You can follow behind the passenger job. 
and uh we won't be doing this on uh on video but uh, i'll get in here okay yeah this guy's ready to go back to conley branch we've got to pull the sawmill and spot him up we got to pull a coal hopper here uh what else we got let's go look at bryson really fast before we finish this up what's going on in bryson today i know we got the four uh wood racks up there yeah four wood racks Nothing there. These two get pulled. That'd be easy pull. And hardwood place. I've kind of thought about making the hardwood place tier three as well, too, to generate some more traffic up here in Bryson. I, I don't know. I, like if we added a Larka, then that would definitely add some uh, some tonnage up here as well, too. But I just, I want to make sure, I don't want to jump the gun and then it'd be a huge, like, grindy pain because we don't have what we need to make it happen. So, this is what I need from you guys, okay? Y'all let me know in the comments below. Should I pull the trigger on the passenger train and uh, expand it with the two observation cars and get the Pacific for it? We won't be able to do all that at once, but that's what I'm looking at doing at the uh, passenger train is... Getting two observation cars, one on each end, and the Pacific, I guess. I think I get it for what, 18,000 is what we said. Yeah, 18 grand. Um, should I get the 060 for um, uh, Dillsboro, the Dillsboro yard job? Or uh, save up for another main line? And I've got to get wood racks. Like, before I do the passenger stuff, we got to get more wood, wood racks. Like, we need... We need um, four more. Four more wood racks. What would that cost us? We could... I mean, we could go ahead and do that now if we wanted to. But four wood racks. 960. 864. So we, yeah, we could, we could get the four. We may wind up doing that. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Love all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Hit that like, subscribe, all the good things. And uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace. No, big cat. No. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Kitty. Oh, that's, uh, that's a MIG. That's a MIG over his head. Okay. It's <laughs> the weirdest day ever. Oh, no. He just fell. He just fell.